Well, this will be part one of reloading for my 7.62 by 39 PSA Gen 1. Keep in mind, this is the old PSA KS47, AR47, whatever you want to call it that shoots 7.62 by 39. All right, let's check this out. Run down the 50 yard line. That does not use an AK-47 magazine. This uses a modified AR-15 magazine for 7.62 by 39. With that being said, this has last round bolt hold, um, which is kind of nice in comparison to the updated PSA KS-47s that do not. You really don't reload for 7.62 by 39. There's good reason. Um, I got a metric ton of 7.62 by 39 that I stockpiled before things went stupid. Uh, this is hollow point, very accurate out of that particular firearm. And this is a uh, full metal jacket uh, without a hollow point. And I used to get this for 19 cents uh, shipped per round. Um, I figured I'd start reloading for 7.62 by 39 just to kind of see what this old 10 and a half inch uh, PSA upper can do. I've never done this before for 7.62 by 39, especially subsonic for 7.62 by 39. And I also got a collection of some 150 grain um, 308 bullets. Now I know some of you guys are right, ready to come screaming out of your chair saying those aren't point. 310 or 0.311 bullets for 7.62 by 39 and I know that but you know what it's good to have friends and connections <laughs> and I actually asked that question of John Petty and some of you guys are like who the heck's John Petty well John Petty runs he used to own DC machine which I believe was bought out by PSA but he still runs it and he does all the barrels for Palmetto State Armory and I asked him the question and he came back with this uh, you know my question was does your AK-47 especially your AR-15 15s the AK-47s uh, AK and your KS-47s AR-15s do they use a different bore size? And he said, this is straight from the horse's mouth, the guys that make the barrels for PSA. He says, our 300 Blackout 7.62 by 39, AK-47, KS-47, or the AR-15, the 308s, or 7.62 by 51s, AR-10s, use the same diameter gun drill, 0 0.2980. Proper bore size identification would be 0 0.30 cal. It's coming straight from the horse's mouth. You know what that tells me? I shouldn't be using 0.31 or 0.310 bullets or 0.311 bullets. I should be using the same bullets I would reload for an AR-10. And that is a 308 caliber. So, you know, 308. 308. Especially these that I just picked up. You guys just watched it. 308. And that's why I'm going 308, not 0.310 or 0.311. You know, you really need to make sure if, if your AK-47 is bored for a true sub 0.62 by 39 that really uses a 0.311 bullet or 0.310 bullet, you might want to do a lead slug in the barrel and test that or call the manufacturer. I figured I would uh, take these non-fired factory rounds. This is, what is this? Bellum, I believe, 123 grain. Um, it's got a nice little nail on the case. These are some really old federal 123 grain soft point hunt rounds I used to use when I deer hunted with my AK-47. And these are full metal jackets, 123 grain wolf, and these have a hollow point, 123 grain wolf. And, you know, I've never done this before. I'm curious to see if the steel fire forms the same way as this brass. I'm going to take you guys out to the range and check that out. And I'm going to take my bump gauges with me. And here's the actual Hornady list, and you can see here, at least with the C.375, uh, that's being used for sub 62 by 39 And so I got that loaded up on my headspace. And I'm going to take my anvil along me out to the range. Uh, I actually have some regular 308 bullets I would use in my um, AR-10 or my 308 uh, deer hunting rifle. Matter of fact, this is what I use for deer hunting in my 308 
uh, bolt action and you point 308 and zero out these calipers here. So this is zeroed out and this is probably a smidge under 308. Uh, yeah, 307, let's grab another one here. So 307, so one thousandth under 308. And 307, okay. So that being said, let's check some out, just check some of these um, here. So 309, this is the 7.62 by 39 factory ammunition. Yeah. So 309, let's check out this Federal. 30, let's just say 309. 309. Check out this wolf. 308. 308. 309. I'm sure some of this wolf is not going to be as consistent. 3085. And 3095. So, you know, roughly a two thousandths of an inch difference. You know, if you really look at it, so let's put two thousandths of an inch on. That's good enough. Uh, can, can you see that crack? <laughs> it's not much of a crack there. You know, it's like a hair. Uh, it's You can barely see the light shining through my caliper. So just to give you an idea of how minuscule that amount is. Well, I'm getting back on the reloading train here, and I haven't done a video in some time on this channel. All right, so starting out with these two, I believe this is a Bellum, I believe. Um, this is 1.212. I got two of each here. 1.212. Uh, I believe this is Federal. So 1.210. 1.211. Um, so the difference between these two here, just so I can keep track of this, uh, this Wolf uh, Full Metal Jacket here is more of a greenish color, where the Hollow Point has more of a gray color casing, uh, so I can kind of keep track of this. So this is coming at 211, 210, so 210, and 21, see, or 209, let's say 210. So I'd say this is averaging between 210 and 212 before it's fire formed. All right, so I'm going to start out with this brass case 212. 212. Got a little steel plate down there at 50 yards. It's been just a long time since I've shot this. And yeah, lock back, so that's good. And this brass, it's got a little bit of a dent in the case mouth opening not too bad it's nothing that uh, reloading can't fix cases look good otherwise very reloadable uh, let's see where this fire formed at so remember this started at 212 so that went from 212 clear up to 223 <laughs> wow um, there's 212 went up to 224 so 11 thousandths of an inch increase. So that's pretty huge. Um, so let's go back to this Federal. So this was 210 before it's fired. And this one is also 212. I'm curious to see if this steel casing fire forms at the same amount. Yeah, that's definitely the Federal. Once again, a little bit of a dent in the case mouth opening. That'll pop right out. I must not have Velcro on this. I don't. So I'm definitely going to have to get Velcro on that brass deflector to get rid of that dent. Because uh, I've never reloaded for this before. But <laughs> expanded from 212 to 225. So you can see this is expanding um, almost the same amount. Yep, 224. So that's what the other stuff expanded at. And this is the Wolf Full Metal Jacket without a hollow point. So 210. Hot tamale. All right, so here's the steel case to see if it fire formed the same amount. And yes, exactly the same amount. So you can use steel case. Uh, for getting an idea on fire forming, so 225, and this one's also 225. Let's try this uh, steel hollow point. Okay. 
All right, so this was from the hollow points. Two, two, three, two, two, three. And 224, and the most we've seen is 225. So I'd say this is fire forming at 224, 225-ish. Uh, a lot of these were starting out at 210. So, I mean, we are talking about some of these uh, pieces of brass growing um, almost, you know, 14, 15 thousandths, which is insane. And that's definitely not precision ammunition, at least reloads that are tuned for this particular upper. Let's take this back to the reloading room. All right, so we got our fire form brass here, and we already measured that out to the range. You know, I'm curious, um, I'm gonna grab some Starline 7.62 by 39. Matter of fact, this is where all the EP 2.0 annealers are made. Uh, for some of you guys don't know, uh, me and Scott Peterson, we own EP integrations, and this is where all the uh, annealers are made. So um, just, yeah, some of you guys are curious about this. This is a boxes of uh backs these are fronts We've got power supplies uh speed controls all your parts for ep 2.0 annealer here and um but that being said we stock on www.epintegrations.com we're also starline brass dealer so it's kind of nice to have this all in stock you know, 38 Super Comp, 38 Special, 9 millimeter, 40 Smith & Wesson, 10 millimeter, 45 ACP, 45, 44 Mag, 357 Mag, 6.5 Creedmoor, the large rifle primer, 6.5 Grendel, 6 Creed, 6 Arc, 5.56 5, NATO, 223 Ram, 300 Blackout, uh, 45 Long Colt, here's sub six, six two by 39, 243, 308, we got some lock. Lockdown blocks, ready to roll. We even carry calipers, one-shot case lube, redding, um, imperial dye wax. We have stock some Vortex and some bullets too, ready to rock and roll. And annealers are boxed up, ready to go. Um, but yeah, I'm curious to see the headspace because I got a feeling, being that this headspace is growing so much, so it's growing what? Well over 10 thousandths of an inch. I'm sure this star line is no different than this. So this is right out of the bag of brand new star line 7.62 by 39. Let me get my bump gauges on here. Get my anvil on. I always recommend using an anvil. Now before I do this, and I'm sure some of you guys are saying this, what if you had crater primers on? this stuff and you know it's something i definitely you definitely need to keep track of none of this looks cratered whatsoever um i checked each one as we went I'm not totally concerned about but it can skew your he uh bumped headspace measurements um you definitely want to keep an eye out for that cratering because it can definitely skew that but with that being said i got a feeling is i'm gonna have to fire form all this to get true precision ammo for my sub port 62 by 39 sure enough you know this is coming in at 1.213, let me grab another piece here. 1.2125, so two and three. So 2125, you can see how consistent the Starline brass is. So 212, so you know, we'll just say 212. Um, you know, a lot of this is expanding clear up, and you guys seen it as it happened out in the field, clear up to damn near a 1.225. So, you know, to get my, what I like to do for at least ARs and semi-automatics, like to bump my brass back from true fire form back three to five thousandths of an inch. I think for this particular AR with this minuscule of a datum line or heads or shoulder, I'm probably going to do a full five thousandths of an inch. It's not like a true precision rig from fire form. So if it's fire forming at, let me grab just one piece out of here. So yeah, 1.225. And I'm going to bump that back five thousandths an inch. Well, that means I'd like to bump this back and resize that 1.220. Well, you know, really you need to fire your brass out of your firearm numerous times to get the true reading. But I think for this application, this is going to be more than sufficient to use 1.225 as our fire form headspace, right? Um, 
<laughs> for me to do that, I'm going to have to fire form all of this, probably with some crappy bullet, which will end up being um, probably these. You know, I'm probably not going to do that with my SSTs for deer hunting, you know, 150 grain. Um, I'm definitely not going to do it with this. Um, I'm probably going to do, you know, I picked this bullet for a reason because it's a full metal jacket with a boat tail, the cantaloupe. It's not what I consider a precision bullet. Uh, I got this more for just plinking because this is really, really cheap. And I'm probably going to end up using this to fire form. I'm going to use all 100 just for, you know, plinking, have a good time at the range for all 100 pieces of this brass to fire form it up to that 1.225 and then bump it back to 1.220, 5 thousandths less, and actually start using that brass for these particular bullets. And I purchased, because I haven't reloaded for this before, um, CFE Black and Reloader 7. So I think I got everything I need, including my custom dies here from Hornady. And you know, a lot of people probably don't know this, um, but inside this die set, and I'll grab the resizing die here. Let me take this out. So you can see this here. This actually measures the same as that 308 bullet. Zeroed out. And just to refresh your memory on these 308 bullets, coming in at roughly 307.307, .307, just a smidge under 308. This should probably be a smidge less than that. So, yep. Yeah. So 305, so it's going two thousandths of an inch. Let me remeasure this, make sure. So 306, 306, 3055, if I really squeeze on this, so I might get 3055. So just, you know, one and a half to two thousandths of an inch less than that bullet, which is what I'm shooting for. Now keep in mind, this is for, now this is coming straight out of the 7.62 by 39 die box. Now, if you, Pay close attention to this die box. There's this little compartment right here. And you might miss it if you didn't pay attention. And in here is this. It's a little bit different for your resize and die. And the reason why they do they give you two different options here, if I measure this, it's a little over for those 0 0.311 bullet flavors. So like once I, sa I said, once again, they're giving you the option if your firearm is bored out for 0.311 or 0 0.310 bullet flavors or 0 0.30 cal bullet flavors. It's something that's very important if you're going to start reloading for 7.62 by 39. So once again, I think it's very important if there's somehow, some way you can double check the manufacturer of your AR that happens to shoot 7.62 by 39 or AK if it actually is bored out for a 308 bore diameter for a 308 cal bullet or if it's 0.311 or 0.310. I think it's very important, especially on the accuracy of the ammunition. You know, if it's truly bored out for 0.311, and you try to shoot 0 .308 bullets, it might fire fine, but it also could start keyholing your bullets about 50 yards or potentially getting baffle strikes on your can. So I think it's really important before you proceed. I think I'm gonna end part one here and I'll see you guys in part two where I'm gonna resize all 100 pieces of this, not so much for obviously bumping that head space, but more for consistent neck, neck tension. I said this before and I'll say it again, you should always resize brand new brass just for that sole purpose of consistent neck tension, especially when a lot of these pieces have dented case mouth openings. I think it's very important. And I'm gonna load this up with a more inexpensive bolt here, more for having fun out the range plinking, and get this uh, reloaded up, fire it through my 10 and a half inch shorty, get this fire formed up to that one point was it two two five to bump it back five thousandths of an inch to one point two two zero being that all this factory is starting well 
over 10 thousandths of an inch under that, so I need to fire form that up. And you know, like I said, this is new for me. And matter of fact, I just got the Area 419 adapters here. Uh, this is where it's not actually righty tighty; it's uh, righty uh, loosey. So this cap comes off. You know, if I lefty tighty tightens on, righty. Lucy, which is the opposite, righty tighty, lefty Lucy, this is the opposite. This has got the Area 419 muzzle adapter on here. What's nice about this is these are only uh, roughly 49, 50 bucks or something like that to swap your cans from firearm to firearm to firearm, which is really nice. And you're not using to put this cap on, which I'm going to show that to you here in the next part of these episodes. Um, I'm so used to going righty tighty. Jesus. But uh, yeah, this should be a fun adventure for both of us. And I will see you guys in the next episode.